Hey everyone, my name is Kayla St. Eliard with the Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention in Oxford, Alabama. And we are here today with Ms. Alina Evans. She is going to be doing an instructional video for the oral fluid drug screens. She is the coroner of Shelby County and the vice president of the Coroner's Association of Alabama. So that's really awesome. I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you. And thank you for just all that you do, putting in the work. I know it's a lot, but you look like you do it well. Thank so, you, I appreciate that. I'm really excited to have you. So you guys, these are very important. As you know, um, substance misuse is running rampant among our communities. And there have been so many overdose deaths and it's, it's heartbreaking. And especially since COVID has begun, I know here in our area, they have doubled, the numbers have doubled, you guys. So this is serious, this is a serious issue. Um, and so it's been a lot on our corners. They've been putting in a lot of a lot more work um, On top just not with the overdose deaths, but just with a lot of other things, you know They already have to do as well So these little kits that they have are going to be able to make their jobs just a little bit easier Maybe get things flowing a little bit quicker give the family answers a little bit faster um, And we're very excited about that and just a little fact for you guys one in four deaths is attributed to alcohol, tobacco, illicit or prescription drug abuse, you guys. That's that's insane. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Miss Lina Evans and she is gonna begin to show you exactly how to use these kits and what to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I love these oral kits. They are a, an easy way to give us a quick, uh, quick answer of what's going on. Uh, these kits come prepackaged. When you open the kit, you will notice that there is a box, for lack of better words, a plastic box. And then I call these lollipops. Um, they're, they're actually sponges on a stick. And you get your little, throw that back in there. Don't, don't eat that. Um, so you have your lollipop. What I do when I get on scene, um, when I suspect an overdose or believe that in some way drugs or opiates play a role in the death, when I get on scene, I immediately place a lollipop in the decedent's mouth. And you'll notice when you take this out of the plastic wrap, the sponge is very hard. It's like a rock. It's like a little pumice stone almost. So it's got to be soft. The goal is to get this soft with some type of fluid. And I know these are designed for oral fluids. They really work best with oral fluids. So when I first get on scene, what I immediately do is put this in the decedent's mouth um, to try to soak up as much fluid as I can. If you have a decedent that's been there maybe or their mouth is dry and you don't have much oral fluid, you can use urine with these. Um, urine works really well. All you have to do is, is take the urine sample like you would traditionally do for a toxicology sample and then just drip on the end of this rock right now. But as you, you'll see, this gets very soft as fluid, um, fluid goes into it. It gets very soft. But one of the things that I do when I get on scene, and I'm going to do this to myself, is immediately place it in their mouth. Stick it in their mouth. Stick it as far back as you can in their mouth. Um, you know, the fluid, they can't swallow anymore, so it builds up back there, especially in the back of the throat. So if you do directly just in the back of the throat, you can also turn their head to the side so that fluid collects at the side. And you can, um, while you're taking your pictures, that fluid will soak up in the sponge. You can use blood on these. If you use a blood, you can take samples of blood and drop on here. Um, blood is so thick, you have to dilute it. We'll talk about that in a second, but the important thing is when you immediately get on scene, put it in the decedent's mouth to try to soak up as much as you can. The goal of this, again, is to become like a sponge. Uh, you'll notice on this, it's not quite there with me. Uh, some of the times uh, when I, well, I think I've got enough, I run it through the mouth like this. You want to just cover the lips, roll it around in the mouth. You can even put that in their nose and get any foam or fluid that's coming out of their nose. Um, again, your goal is it's already starting to become spongy. 
if I have, think that I have uh, used enough or I've got as much fluid as I can get on this and it's still not hard enough where you put it down into the plastic box, it should go flat. So it will not go down, it's still really hard. Go to the sink and drip water on it. And this is just saline, but you can go to any water source, bottled water, the, the sink, and drip water on it. It takes about 10, maybe 15 drops to drop on the sponge. You'll see if you look really careful, that sponge is becoming hydrated again. You can take that and press all the way down. You see that sponge becomes flat. This should be flat across here. If it does not go down, it's not wet enough. You need to add water to it. When you use blood as your sample, you have got to dilute it with saline or water. The blood is too thick. It will not, um, it, the test won't run correctly. Um, you've got to dilute it with water because if you peel off these, you'll notice if you look really carefully, it starts to run up like a pregnancy test. Um, so you'll see the test, the fluid start to run up the sides of the test. It takes about 10 minutes for this test to run, um, but it's gotta be wet enough to run up the sides. So that's your goal, to have it wet enough to run up the sides, your sponge again should be flat and you, if you see that the fluid is running up the sides, you know that you've got it wet enough and that it's gonna run. It takes about 10 minutes. So you can set that aside while you're doing all of your information gathering. Wanted to give you a couple of examples what to look for with this. Um, in, this first, in this first example that I have, I wanna show you what a negative, uh, negative slide looks like, a negative side of the oral fluid. Um, on this next side, you're going to see that a line is missing. Um, the control line, when you look at these, there should be a line on the top, the very top, on both sides, that's the control line. Um, that just tells you that the test ran and it ran correctly. If you have a line on the bottom, that's a negative result. So it would be a negative test, negative pregnancy. Um, but if you do not have a line on the bottom, that is a positive result. And if you get confused on these boxes, they even have a, what a negative and a positive looks like. Um, but again, if you do not have a line on the bottom and you have a line on the top, it's a positive result for that drug. Um, and you, you'll be able to see the different drugs up, up here. Um, but on this, this screen I wanted to give you is a result of a, what a positive looks like. And this is a positive for opiates. Please remember that positive for opiates does not just mean hydrocodone or morphine. A positive for opiates could also be positive for heroin. So opiates being positive on this drug screen is not specific for heroin. It is not specific for hydrocodone or morphine. Um, so just know that if it's a positive opiate, it could possibly be heroin, it could possibly be hydrocodone, it could possibly be just regular morphine. Um, you'll see on this drug screen that I'm showing you the positive opiates when I did run the official toxicology with the state, it was positive for morphine and co codeine, which it turns out that, that was actually heroin. Um, you'll see on here too, lorazepam was positive. It showed a, a result of 17 nanograms per ml, but on my drug screen, the benzodiazepine was negative. And it was negative because it wasn't high enough to reach that threshold, so it was a negative result. 17 nanograms per ml is, is a negative result. It, you can't, you're not gonna overdose it, it's not gonna cause your death. And so that's why it was negative on this drug screen on the saliva confirm. In the next example that I'm gonna show you is, and I apologize, they're hard to see, um, but this is what we're commonly seeing is that positive fentanyl result. So you'll notice on this one, there is no line down at the bottom of the fentanyl. Um, there's no line down at the bottom of the cocaine. And when I do this toxicology, we'll see it did come back positive for fentanyl and positive for, for cocaine. So they are consistent. I have run these side by side for two years. 
Um, I have had no, no problems with them. Uh, remember this, if you have a positive methamphetamine line, you should also have a positive amphetamine line um, because methamphetamine breaks down to amphetamine. So if you have a positive meth line, you should have a positive amphetamine line. If you have a negative amphetamine line and a positive, I'm sorry, if you have a negative amphetamine line and a positive amphetamine line, that's probably going to do uh, be from ADHD, drugs, Ritalin, uh, uh, Vyvanse, things like that, that the, the patient was on. So inquire about their prescription history or look at their pills. Um, it's very important. So if you have a, a negative methamphetamine but a positive amphetamine, it's probably a prescription pill that they were taking. Also, you need to make sure that you document these. In these pictures, I take pictures of the drug uh, tests after, after they have run. Um, that's just long enough to get back to the office. I have an in, my own in-house talk screen um, result page, just like Forensics gives, and this is an example of that. You know, you need to put your own logo on it um, and put that with the case file. Whenever I have a, an insurance company or family call me wanting their talk screen and I have only run the in-house or this oral screen, this is the toxicology results that I give them. Um, so that seems to suffice very well. Going back to our test that I took earlier, you will see it's been about 10 minutes. And if you'll look closely, you have a control line on the top we have all lines on the bottom showing, so I was negative for everything. And then again on the other side, the reverse side, the control lines at the top, and there are lines all the way across the bottom, so these results were actually negative. Um, so best to read in 10 minutes. You don't want these sitting in your car for a few hours and deciding you'll, you'll take, a, take a picture and read them. About 10 minutes is what you need because they do start to fade just like any other test of this sort, they will start to fade over time. Um, so about 10 minutes to run the test. If you see that there is a slight line, you have to assume that that is a negative result. If it does not have a line, that is a positive result down at the bottom. Um, if you have a case that you suspect will go to court, will have litigation, uh, DUI case, perhaps uh, a motor vehicle accident that you suspect will go to court, obviously homicide or, or anything that you suspect somebody is going to be charged and taken to court, you do need to do a formal toxicology and submit that to DFS. This is just an, a, a way that we can sign out death certificates very quickly. Because I will say this, if it is positive for fentanyl on this drug screen, their cause of death is going to be intoxication with fentanyl, an accidental death. If it is positive for methamphetamine on this drug screen, if it's positive for cocaine on this drug screen, positive for opiates on this drug screen, positive for methadone on this drug screen, the cause of death is going to be toxic effects of methadone, cocaine, opiates, etc. You can sign out a death certificate, death certificate with this toxicology screen. I feel very comfortable in saying that with you. Um, I've been using these for two years and I feel very comfortable doing the side-by-side -side analysis with, with forensics. Now, do we have any questions? Alrighty, that was very, uh, very informative, but I do have a few questions. Okay. And this may be questions that y'all actually watching this video might have yourself, and hopefully we can answer them for you today. So, these kits, can they be used in court? Very good question. So again, I suspect if you have a case that you know is going to court, like a, a, a motor vehicle accident or a homicide, or that you feel, hey, this typically goes to court in my county, I would do an, a, an official state toxicology exam that gives a quantification, um, that gives you a number. So if you suspect that, I would definitely uh, pull a, a real toxicology exam. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So what if insurance companies request a toxicology report? Very good, because we have that all the time. And a lot of times I just typically do it in-house. I do not send for forensics 
rarely ever unless I suspect another drug. You know, we do have some over-the-counter gasoline that you buy at the gas store. Um, so we, we want to test those. We want that to go to forensics. If we suspect that it's uh, TH, THC-8, like the gummies, or we expect that, or we suspect that it's a gas station um, drug, we want to send that to forensics. If we suspect diphenhydramine, Benadryl, there's a lot of Benadryl in the house. This test will not pick up Benadryl. We need to pull a, a traditional toxicology and send that into the state. But when insurance companies do call and ask for that after I have done an in-house, I give them my in-house toxico toxicology screen form. And that's just a form that I created in-house that after I read this test, I go back and fill out a form and put that in with their case file. Oh wow, that's really interesting. That was great information. So what sort of documentation or report can go with these if you don't do a toxicology with DFS? So again, I would definitely, you definitely need to take a picture. It's, a, it's an easy way to remember what was positive and negative on scene. Take a picture of, of this test and that way you have something physical to show, like this was this case, this was their test. And then when you get back to the office or you have time, go on to your homemade toxicology, in-house toxicology screen that I showed the example of and fill that out so you'll have that with their case file. Okay, great. And one last question. So how long does it take for the lollipop to become saturated? I know that you show different techniques of how you can saturate it, but if it does so happen that we get you know a good amount of fluid on one side, how long does that typically take? So remember, the important thing is they're hard as rocks, and you'll when you see your own lollipop, you'll see wow, this is really really tough. The important is when you put it into the box, if it doesn't easily squish down, it's not saturated enough. And if you have gathered as much oral as you can, add water to it. Urine's not gonna be an issue. You know, everybody has enough urine to put on here. Blood's not gonna be the issue. You drop five or six drops of blood on it and then add water to that, it's not gonna be a problem. Oral fluid, you wanna make sure you get it as saturated as you can. And if it still doesn't go all the way down, you want to add water to it. The goal is to get this flat and squished down. Great. Yes, so this has been really awesome and I really hope you watching this video that this was informative, that this gave you just a better idea of how to use these kits. I know I learned something new. I was in the background watching and I was like, wow, like that's that's really cool. And I feel like these are going to be extremely useful. Um, and so you, you seem like an expert on it. I and love <laughs> these kits. Yes. These kits are awesome. You can sign a death certificate with it. You don't have to wait six months for the toxicology exam. Yeah, and this is gonna make a lot of the jobs easier. It'll put a lot of families at ease quicker, exactly. I think, because um, it's just that wait. I've noticed just that waiting period. Families are like, I don't know what's going on. And this will just bring a lot, a little bit more peace, a little bit quicker. So that's awesome. So here at the Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention, we just want to remind everyone of our HOPE campaign. Hold on, pain ends. So this is a, a campaign to just spread awareness of what's going on in our community. And if you're going on, you know, through something, please seek help, uh, seek peace, peace within yourself. And just remember to hold on, pain ends. If you have any further questions, uh, most of you might know how to reach out to Miss Lina. So just hit her up or you're more than welcome to call us here at ASAP at 256-831-4436. Visit us on all of our social medias at Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention or on our website at ASAPREV.com. Thank you. Thank you.